Welcome back to the Monday Morning Point Guard Podcast. I'm going to call this section the fast break uh, just because it's a few things that happened last week that I either already dedicated a video to and don't really have anything new to say, um, but I still felt they were worth mentioning or just something I didn't want to dedicate an entire section of a video to. Um, so I guess first and most sadly, uh, Zion has been shut down here indefinitely. Um, he had just been cleared for all basketball related activities, um, but he had a setback with the injury. And I think it begs the question, you know, will we see him play at all this year or ever for that matter? Um, saw something interesting, you know, just posted online. Can't remember the exact numbers, but I think the point still sticks. Uh, he, at this point in his career, uh, he has missed more games than he has played. Now, granted, it was only one more game. It's something like he's missed 83 or missed 84 games and played 83. Um, but regardless, like the situation with him, you know, if he, especially if he misses this entire year, you're talking about a player who's had three full seasons in the league and has only played one season of basketball. So he's, you know, only playing 33% of his games. That's, that's tough. Um, I've already done a video on the whole dumpster fire that is the Pelicans as an organization and his frustrations with the team, which I feel are justified um, with kind of the route they've taken, be it coaching decisions, player decisions, you know, kind of how they've built the team around him. I don't think they've done him any favors and motivated him to kind of work hard and rehab and whatnot. Um, but also his weight, clearly it's an issue. Um, to what degree it is with these injuries, he may have struggled with these regardless. But if he wants to have a future in the league and it's looking like a future of any kind is in jeopardy, not even an all-star level future, but just – you know, having a 10-year career is really in jeopardy at this point. Um, he's got to get that under control. And it's just really sad as a whole um, just because, you know, coming into the league, we really hadn't seen a prospect hyped up that much since LeBron James. And, you know, whether some of that was fair to him or not, we were still very excited about what he brought to the league. And when he's been on the court, like, no complaints. He's been excellent. You know, he's unstoppable going to the basket and, you know, super efficient. He was awesome last year. Um, and, you know, when he played and that's kind of been the case here so far. Um, one thing with Zion versus LeBron in terms of how hyped they were, you know, Zion had a little bit more buzz, maybe just because of social media. Like, uh, I think he was more people were aware of him. Um, but, you know, LeBron, I think from a basketball perspective, people still would have probably seen him as the better prospect as opposed to Zion. But regardless, we were cut, we were just drooling over the prospect of him playing in the NBA. And it's just been a huge disappointment to this this point. I hope he can get it all sorted out. I hope he can have a long career. And I hope this is just a bump in the road for him. But it's it's getting to a level where, like, we were concerned before. We were concerned with him entering the league. Now that level of concern is even higher. And it keeps raising and raising and raising because um, we don't want this to turn into Greg Oden 2.0. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, kind of on a more lighthearted note, I can't believe I'm talking about this again, but Ben Simmons trade talks are heating up. Um, there's some news that, you know, Dame was excited about the prospect of playing with Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons may have said vice versa. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, the obvious trade piece in that deal, given that Portland keeps reiterating that they're not trading Damian Lillard. Um, so that would be a CJ McCollum deal. Um, initially, I think Portland had turned it down CJ and four first rounders for Simmons. I think if you got out of there with CJ and two first rounders, I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, I'm not sure how game Philly is for that. Maybe you could throw in a Covington and Danny Green swap if you feel better about Covington than Danny Green. I don't know if you do. I do, but I don't know if Philly does. Um, just to kind of sweeten the pot a little bit. But four first rounds for Simmons, it's, uh, it's kind of steep. Um, but regardless, that's going to be on delay. CJ has a collapsed lung, which 
when I first heard that not being a doctor, I was like, well, that sounds really terrible. Like that sounds like a life altering career altering type injury. I listened to a doctor talk about it on YouTube. So, you know, it's true uh, now, but I listened to a doctor talk about it. It's not, I guess the science of it is it's, they just call it a collapsed lung and it's actually not that big of a deal. Um, might miss six to 10 games. It sounds really scary, but I think it sounds scarier than it is. At least that's what I hope. Um, so that could delay any trade talks. Also Simmons kind of said last week as well, later into the week that he would relish the opportunity to play for Greg Popovich in San Antonio. Um, that, you know, I think that Popovich would be kind of the guy to get the, the ship righted for him and his career. I'm not sure San Antonio is going to be willing to do that. I don't think they have the pieces to kind of entice Philly. And I don't think San Antonio at this stage, it looks like they're really gearing up for a major overhaul rebuild type situation. Um, I don't think they're going to be willing to give up any draft picks. So you're talking about like DeJounte Murray, maybe Thad Young. I, I don't know what the package would be for, for, um, San Antonio, but I don't know if you're doing DeJounte Murray for Ben Simmons. Um, DeJounte is kind of coming along and he's more of a guaranteed thing versus the, the kind of the head case that Ben Simmons has been. Without the mental stuff and kind of the way he's handled um, this trade demand, I think you, you would obviously take Ben Simmons talent wise over DeJounte, but I think with the baggage that kind of comes along with Simmons, I don't think you you, you may want to reconsider that. Um, but hilariously, kind of on a funny note, so Ben Simmons so far, uh, happy to play for the Blazers, the Spurs, any of the California teams, which includes Sacramento. Um, pretty soon, he's just going to kind of keep going down the list of teams, and we're going to be like, he's going to be saying that, Oh, I'd be really relish the opportunity to play in Orlando and get to live close to Mickey Mouse. Like, it's just at some point he's just going to keep casting his lure out there until he gets a bite on one of these deals. But it's just, yeah, we're kind of stuck in a holding pattern as as we've been. I just wanted, I just wanted to be traded. I don't even care for what at this point. I just want to move on with my life. Um, but looks like we're still in it for at least a little bit more. It doesn't look like it's you know, completely unsolvable anymore. Um, but it's, it's, I guess it's moving in the right direction. So maybe we get something done this season, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, last thing I wanted to mention a couple weeks ago, the Grizzlies beat down the Oklahoma city thunder by 73. You heard that right. The final score had a margin of 73 points. That is just insane to me. Um, also, interestingly enough, no John Morant. So Grizzlies without their best player still beat the Oklahoma City Thunder by 73 points. Um, Oklahoma City was missing Shea Gilgis Alexander and Josh Giddy. So arguably their top two players. Shea is definitely their top player, but I don't know what people's opinions are on Giddy. I unfortunately, based on my location in the country, am unable to watch Oklahoma City Thunder games um, because I don't get them on like local broadcasts. And because of my proximity to Oklahoma City, um, I also can't get them on league pass because I think they assume that I get the Oklahoma City game. So what a shame. I haven't had a chance to watch them this year. Um, yeah, that's inexcusable. Like, I don't, the Thunder, that, that just, I, I know they're tanking, but that just can't happen. You can't lose by a college basketball score, you know, <laughs> like a team, team to score 73 points in college basketball is like a, a decent mark, I feel like. And you, you can't lose by that amount. Like, that's, that's crazy. It's just, it, it's embarrassing. I know they're missing their top two players, but it still can't happen. It still just can't happen. But, Switch gears. Let's talk about the Grizzlies, something a little bit more positive. Uh, they're currently sitting in the fourth seed as of, you know, me recording this. Um, and they've missed Ja here for a, a good, a, a decent portion here. And they've kind of kept the ship afloat and still been winning games. Um, they kicked the snot out of the heat without Ja. Granted, we've got a whole slew of injuries, too. Uh, and we didn't lose by 73 points. But um, and then they beat the full strength Lakers. You know, I know they're missing Ariza and Kendrick Nunn, but. With Davis, Westbrook, and LeBron, I'm still going to consider them at full strength. Um, so they kind of beat them pretty handily, too, uh, last week. So they're looking like a legitimate team. And I think the really exciting thing for Grizzlies fans, if you think back to last season, 
um, after the Hawks made their coaching change, Trey Young missed some time with them in a pretty significant amount of time, if I remember correctly. I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, during that time, they were also able to keep the ship afloat and keep winning games. And it was with Bogdan Bogdanovich who um, – he kind of stepped in as the primary offense initiator and playmaker. And then by the time they got Trey back, he didn't feel like he had to do everything for them as much. And the team kind of learned to play without him. So when he either wasn't on the floor, needed a couple possessions off, um, or just they wanted to get him off the ball, they could do that. Now you're going to be able to do that with Ja, with the, um, you know, the, the surprising play of Desmond Bain and, um, Dylan Brooks stepping up, guys like that. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. has been awesome. You know, he's kind of after, his, you know, kind of a rough start to his career, just injury wise. Um, you know, he looks like what we thought he would be now. And he's really molding into a great player. So now when they get job back, you know, for that final playoff push, I know we're kind of early to be doing that. But, you know, when when they do get him back, he doesn't have to carry the team as much as he did last year and it could result in a really good season for them. I hope they're able to hold on to their seed. I really like, you know, Memphis as an organization, they've made some mistakes drafting, but overall for a small market team, you know, I think they've done a really great job over the last decade or so, you know, staying competitive and, and hanging around, you know, they've not won a title yet, but uh, with the grit and grind era, that was a really fun era of basketball to watch with them. And it looks like we're kind of moving into the grit and grind 2.0 because they're, they are nasty on defense. Um, so hopefully Ja comes back and they can keep this, this winning pace up. Um, yeah, I, I think before the season, if you had told me the Grizzlies were looking at home court in the first round, I would have told you you were crazy, but Hey, here we are. <laughs>